John Bogle, who is the founder of Vanguard, once said, don't look for a needle in a haystack and instead just buy the whole haystack. But if John was around today, the question that I'd like to ask him is how many haystacks do you need to make up a good investment portfolio? Because if a needle equates to a stock like Apple, then a haystack would probably equate to a stock market indice like the S&P 500. Then I guess you could say a barn full of haystacks would equate to your life strategy fund. But is one haystack simply enough or do you need a barn full of haystacks in order to maximize the returns within your investment portfolio well let's find out whenever i go on to make an investment the one question i ask myself is why did i make that investment what exactly are the benefits and drawbacks of making that investment and if i'm investing into perhaps a broader fund does every single part of that fund still remain relevant in order to help me achieve my own investment objectives? But let me be honest guys, when I first invested into my 80% life strategy fund, I asked myself none of those questions. Because at the time, five years or so ago, I was a complete investing beginner. I simply looked at the fund, remembered I'd read somewhere around the importance of having a diversified investment portfolio, and as a result, I thought the life strategy fund perfectly fitted the bill. A perfect mix between stocks and bonds with 80% weighted towards stocks, which was a little bit more aggressive and kind of fitted in with my overall approach to investing. So I began cost averaging my way into the fund and to be honest, I didn't really think all too much about it from there. But now five years on, I've revisited my Vanguard investment portfolio and based on some changes in my life, which I'm gonna share with you guys later on in the video, I thought now was the time to sell and here's why. Now, of course, this is my own personal view based on my own personal investment objectives, based on my own personal risk appetite. So bear that in mind with what I'm just about to say. And there are perhaps three main issues that I have with the funds. So in no particular order, the first problem is with diversification. Now, diversification is, of course, a really important element to any investment portfolio. But the question is, how much diversification do you actually need? What exactly is the marginal benefit for your investment portfolio, assuming that you've been able to effectively de-risk your portfolio, along with maximize the potential upside as a result of investing into a fund like a life strategy fund? Because as you guys can see, there are a ton of different funds within this broader fund itself. From the Vanguard UK All Share Fund, which has 591 holdings, you've got the FTSE Developed World Fund with 2,110 holdings, the Vanguard US equity fund with 4,074 holdings and the global bond index with 13,266 holdings. So that's 20,041 holdings just within the top four funds within this life strategy fund. And you've still got the likes of the S&P 500, the FTSE 100 and the FTSE 250 to add into the mix as well. So by the time you add up all of the individual holdings for the life strategy fund, you've probably got somewhere in the realms of about 25,000 holdings. Which if I think back to the question at the start of the video around asking the question why I'm investing into a fund, I did have to self-reflect and ask myself why I needed to have 20 to 25,000 holdings within one single fund to make up a portion of my investment portfolio. To be honest, guys, there's absolutely no chance whatsoever that I would go on to invest into 25,000 individual holdings. So why on earth would I invest into a fund which had that many holdings within it? I had to kind of ask myself, what is the actual benefit to me and my investment portfolio for having that many holdings? Because according to a study in which I found, you actually mitigate about 90% of the risk within your investment portfolio from just having 10 holdings within it. And based on the law of diminishing returns, then actually for every stock or every holding that you add into that investment portfolio thereafter, the returns actually become slightly lower. And whilst opinion is broadly split on how many holdings you should have within an investment portfolio, there's plenty of articles out there that pretty much say the optimal point is between about 10 to about 30 holdings. And if that's true, well, there doesn't really feel like an exact need to have 20,000 different holdings within one single fund. And that theory is kind of backed up when we actually talk about the real rates of return, which I've personally been able to achieve from investing in my 80% life strategy fund. And that was another one of the key reasons as to why I went on to sell. Because at the end of the day, there is an opportunity opportunity cost to every investment decision which you make. At the point at which I sold my position, I had roughly about £7,000 worth within the fund. And there's always an underlying question there when you have that kind of money invested, 
could this money be better used elsewhere? And when you look at the return on investment compared to some of my other investments, well, the answer was a resounding yes. Because from the period of time which I held this fund for, I achieved a growth return of 44.48%, which don't get me wrong, is pretty good over a five year period. It's just shy of 10% per year, which in itself is pretty phenomenal. But when you compare that to the S&P 500, which I started investing into at the exact same time that I was investing into the life strategy fund, well, the S&P 500 has provided me with a net return of 112%, which just shows the sheer difference of how much this life strategy fund has actually underperformed just the broader S&P 500. And even if I compare it to some of my biggest individual stock holdings, like Apple as an example, well, Apple have actually gone on to provide returns of 387% in the past five years. And whilst that's a little bit like comparing apples with oranges, no pun intended, because I obviously cost averaged my way into my life strategy fund as well as the S&P 500, whereas the Apple returns are kind of net returns over a five year period. And obviously I wouldn't actually account for those full 387% because I would have slowly cost averaged my way in over time. But nonetheless, you kind of get the picture how investing into perhaps individual stocks like Apple, or perhaps even just a broader S&P 500 index would have given me slightly better performance. Now you guys might be thinking, well, Mitch, if you believe in perhaps the 10 holding portfolio being the optimal one, then why on earth would you have within your own personal investment portfolio an S&P 500 ETF, which has about 500 holdings within it. And the truth of the matter is beating the market is difficult. And the S&P 500 is without doubt one of, if not the best performing stock market indices over the course of the past two decades. And I'm certainly by no means the next Warren Buffett. So as a result, I feel more comfortable with my own investment objectives and my own risk appetite to have a big allocation towards a well diversified fund like the S&P 500, which I'm pretty happy to accept my average annual rates of return between nine and 10% per year. But as you guys may have seen through my other investment portfolio updates, I do also hold a number of individual holdings which I do believe have the potential to outperform the broader market. And as a result, I'm gonna hold those within my investment portfolio too, as a slightly more aggressive approach to investing for at least the next five years. And that's pretty much how I run my investment portfolio, with a pretty big chunk towards just broad scale diversification, but not too much diversification, along with some individual stocks too. So there are two reasons why, but probably the main reason, which is reason number three, is that I've actually gone on to start a property investment company. And as a result, the truth of the matter is I actually needed some of my funds from my investment portfolio to give me a little bit more cash in order to invest into this company, which I've started. Now, I'm not going to touch on all of the details of this property company because I'm still very much in the early stages. And I know it's something that I've touched on as a personal goal of mine in previous videos, but I thought I'd let you guys know that the ball is now rolling. But this is where I need your help for the future direction of this channel. Now, of course, this channel is predominantly about stock market investing and me sharing with you guys my own you know, personal investing strategies, my own personal investment portfolios. But when the time is right, would you guys want to see me actually talk a little bit more about my property investing journey too? I was kind of thinking in the back of my mind, I could make some videos on my property investing strategy, talk a little bit more about the details and the things that I've had to do in order to get things up and running potentially even give you a tour of the property once I've gone on to purchase it, along with give you guys an insight to the numbers and the return on investment and all of that kind of good stuff. So if that is something that you would be interested in me adding to this channel at some point in the future, then be sure to drop a like on this video so I know as well. Comment down in the comment section something like show me your property portfolio just so I know to gauge the interest and to whether I should add these videos to the channel or not. So guys, that's pretty much it. A few changes my end to my Vanguard portfolio, but if you do want to see a little bit more about what else is in my investment portfolio over on Trading 2 on 2, then be sure to click on this video here. Be sure to subscribe to the channel if you're new around here. And with that being said, I'll see you over in the next one.